Hello horror movie fans and welcome to Lost in the Real. Today I'm going to be reviewing the film Dark Harvest, based on the novel by Norman Partridge. Is this a new Halloween classic in the making, or is it another disappointing book to movie adaptation? Let's talk about it. <laughs> Dark Harvest takes place in a cursed town, where the annual harvest becomes a brutal battle for survival. On Halloween 1963, Sawtooth Jack, a terrifying legend, rises from the cornfields, threatening the town's children. Groups of boys unite to defeat the murderous scarecrow before midnight. Richie, a rebellious outcast, joins the run, motivated by his brother's previous victory. As the hunt progresses, Richie makes a shocking discovery and faces a pivotal choice to break the relentless cycle. The new horror movie Dark Harvest, which is the last official release from MGM before their merger with Amazon, has so much going for it, and also features so many attributes that get me excited just talking about it. The plot itself harkens back to old urban legends involving sinister creatures. It has a genuine sense of nostalgia as it takes place in the 1960s. It's bloody and gruesome and does a great job mixing practical and visual effects. And it's directed by David Slade, who directed one of my favorite films, Hard Candy, and the underrated horror gem, 30 Days of Night. The novel in which it's based on is also a beloved little Halloween fixture that was perfectly crafted for a film adaptation. So how did this movie turn out to be as sloppy as it is? Don't get me wrong, there are a lot of things about Dark Harvest that I believe make it worth at least a one-time watch. But this had all of the makings of being a bona fide Halloween classic, and I think that's what makes it so disappointing. I'll start off with the flaws here so we can get to the root of why this film doesn't reach its potential. The biggest issue for me is that the lore revolving around this town and its infamous monster Sawtooth Jack is so brushed over at the beginning as is all of the character development that is integral to the plot. The first act moves so quickly, introducing a slew of characters, trying to set up the time and place, and then explaining this town's violent curse in what can only be described as a complete exposition dump. So then, when the third act comes around, when secrets come to light and the twists start to be revealed, nothing has much of an impact. The fact that you never get to know this group of kids at the beginning, or the adults at the center of it all, also makes it extremely hard to care all that much for what ultimately happens to them. Also, I have to note, with no spoilers, that the first ending to this movie is absolutely awful. It's anticlimactic and so sudden, and it honestly pissed me the hell off. But please stay for a mid credit sequence that makes the finale a little bit more palatable. It also doesn't help that the cast of young adults seem like they are acting in a completely different movie than all of the actual adults. Veteran actors Jeremy Davies, Elizabeth Reeser, and Luke Kirby are hamming it up and overacting so much that when they are on screen you feel like you're watching a episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Kirby especially feels like he is chewing the scenery with a crazy voice and accent, though it does feel like he's having a blast doing it. The young actors, on the other hand, are playing everything completely straight and serious. And while I do think the two leads, Casey Likes and Amiri Crutchfield, are decent in their roles, some of the other performers are not very believable. The juxtaposition of the two types of acting makes it feel like you are watching a horror movie in the middle of an identity crisis. 
Yet, despite these glaring flaws, I had a lot of fun with Dark Harvest, especially during its middle act. When the boys are locked in their rooms for three days and nights without food or water, and then unleashed out onto the town on a sole mission to destroy Sawtooth Jack, this movie becomes a whole different beast. It's like a mix of Battle Royale and The Warriors meets Jeepers Creepers and Trick or Treat. And I loved it. The hacking and slashing kills are so brutal and brilliantly crafted that there are many I will not soon forget. The production and costume design are impeccable, especially for a lower budget movie, and I really felt transported into the 60s. David Slade's signature handheld camera work is perfectly suited to throw you right into the action. And I have to commend the effects team on all of their work bringing Sawtooth Jack to life. This is a memorable and terrifying creature, and he is shown in just the right amount of spurts that you never feel oversaturated by his presence. I only wish that the momentum built in that middle act was continued throughout the rest of the film, because when Dark Harvest starts to reveal its twists, it's like it just sputters and dies on its way to the conclusion. One can only wish that the movie did full justice to all of its brilliant working parts. And while I get excited talking about this movie for all of its fantastic attributes, I can't help but feel bummed that it just doesn't reach the height of its potential. Even so, if you're looking for a fun, bloody, schlocky spook fest to watch in between all of your favorite Halloween movies, you could do a lot worse than Dark Harvest. Thank you so much for watching Lost in the Real. What are your thoughts on Dark Harvest? If you have read the book, how do you think this adaptation compares? Sound off in the comment section down below. And until next time, my friends, take care.